Hey everyone and welcome to the Oakley Roots YouTube channel. In today's tutorial we're going to be revisiting a project that we've done previously but today we're going to be revisiting it with three different options and using a new template that is in shop Oakley Roots. Today we're going to be making some itty bitty boxy bags and these are a new size and these are from Oakley Roots patterns and we're going to be showing how to make these three different versions using our latest template set. So if you've been around Oakley Roots for a while, you know we love templates over here. Templates are making everything so much easier and the itty bitty boxy bag, this was something that a lot of people were asking for templates for and there was also a lot of people asking for a new size for these because the original itty bitty boxy bags are very small, very cute, we love them. However, they don't fit credit cards, ID cards, things like that. This new size will. So today I'm going to walk you through three different versions. One is this version right here where we'll be doing a grommet. We have one main panel for the exterior. We have a zipper. We have the little tab as always. And then we have the lining inside. Another version is going to be doing if you have a directional print. So if you can see here, there's a seam running right along the bottom. So I'm going to show you how to use the templates to make two panels to create the exterior panel. So if you have a directional print, it'll be the right direction. And then once again, lining. This one does not have a grommet. Grommets are completely optional. If you don't need them, then don't use them. I will show you the grommets are most popular for dog waste bag holders. So you can see this is another version I made here. You open it up and then we have some doggy poo poo bags in there and you can just pull it out through the grommet and you can add this to a keychain. You can put this on a little wristlet. I'll show you my favorite thing to do is to add it to these little coil bracelets on a little keychain. And so this is the third version we'll be making today. This is a clear vinyl version. Just, it's just fun. The clear vinyl version ends up just slightly bigger than the other versions because of seam allowances and things like that. I'll walk you through all of it. So if you're new to the Oak Roots YouTube channel, please consider clicking subscribe down below. If at any point you like this video, please give it a like. Any questions, comments, shout outs, anything at all, leave them down in the comment section. Let me know if you've been tweaking these itty bitty boxy bags and a lot of people have been changing up things. I'm very excited to make these today. I'm really excited about the templates. I, I've sent them out already and we've already listed the templates in the shop a couple of times. So I know a lot of people have them. Uh, so far I've heard a lot of positive responses from it. So if you grab some templates, let me know. I will have them restocked continuously on Shop Oakley Roots. So I'll have a link down below for the templates. If they are sold out at the moment, just add yourself to that email list. And as soon as I restock them, you'll get an email letting you know. All right guys, let's get started. Alrighty, so when making these, you really can use whatever material you want. My personal favorite material to use for the exterior and the lining is a water-resistant canvas, especially if you're going to be using this for waste bags. Water-resistant canvas is really easy to keep clean, to wash. It doesn't require a lot. You can throw this in the washing machine. It's going to be fine. I really like using it for the exterior and the lining. However, this one right here I made with nothing but quilt cotton, and I didn't add any interfacing at all. Interfacing is going to make it more structured, but you can see it's very loosey-goosey. So this is also an easy item to throw in the washing machine. An alteration I really love is using clear vinyl. So there's no lining with the clear vinyl. And we do have a little bit of an accent here as well. We'll go over that. So in today's tutorial, like I said, we're going to go over the first version here, which is a full body one piece of fabric exterior. We'll do the grommet and I'll put the whole thing together for you. Then I'll show you how to build the exterior of one of these with a fabric that is a directional print, but I'm not going to walk you through the whole tutorial once again, since we'll already have done that with this one. But then the third option I will walk you through from start to end is the clear vinyl version. So this is the itty bitty boxy template set I'll be using in today's tutorial. We have lots of different colors in the shop, but this is the clear, probably the most popular version. In it, you have one large rectangle and this is for the full panel exterior. We have a hole marked here. This hole is specifically for a 12 millimeter grommet if you want to place that so you can mark it before you put it all together. However, it's also really good at marking the center for a bag tag or for a design. It's hard to see with the camera, but there are dashed lines running along all these rectangles here and those dashed lines are going to let you know where everything is. So at the very top and the very bottom of the short edges, we have the seam allowance for the zipper and then we have a small rectangle here and that's going to be this top bit of your itty bitty boxy bag. And then you have a larger rectangle here that has the grommet hole. That's going to be the side. So this side, this side, there's another one down here. And then the biggest rectangle in the very center, that's the bottom right here. So if you have a print and you really want to make sure like a little face peeks out right by the zipper, this is going to help you line everything up so you can do that. The next template is for the lining. And so you're going to have two pieces for the lining, but you can also use this template to build an exterior panel. If you have two pieces of material that are directional print and you want to sew them together. So I'm going to show you how to use this for that. 
Finally, this is a piece for the tab. The tab cut size we typically use is a two inch by two inch and then double fold it. However, remember if you're using vinyl, you can just use a half inch by two inch piece of vinyl instead of folding it all together. The tab cut also has this little triangle right here with dashed lines and that's what we're gonna use for boxing the bottom corners. So here are some supplies I'll be using for every bag today. For my top thread in my sewing machine, I'm using a Tex 45 weight thread. A Tex 35 weight thread also works really well. This color is Fairy Floss. Um, I'll have a link for it down below. For my bobbin thread, I have this, this Guterman thread from Joann's. The needle I'll be using today is a Microtex 8012 needle. For the clear vinyl, you might wanna use a non-stick needle. Uh, I'll show you that once we get to that point. I might need to use that. Depending on the clear vinyl, some clear vinyls are just so sticky, you need to change your needle out. A double-sided tape, I'm using quarter-inch double-sided tape today. A lighter to clean up any little loose threads. This is really cool. This is called Odif Grippy Non-Slip Coating. So I don't know if you can see the difference here. I applied the nonstick coating to the back of this lining template, but I did not apply it to this full panel here. So it gives it kind of a hazy look. However, it does prevent this from slipping on the material. So if you're using these templates to hold down on your material and then cut, especially if you're cutting on water resistant canvas, which can be a little slippery, it can move around on you and I don't want you to get hurt. So if you're worried about that, grab some of this coating, spray just lightly the back of it, let it dry, and then put this on the material and you don't have to worry about this slipping around. It's a lot safer. Next, I have my one inch by six inch ruler as always. I have a vinyl marking tool here. This is just like a silver ink pen. I have a air erasing marker here. This is a fine line purple one. My stiletto, which is like my third hand at the sewing machine. And then of course my seam ripper and stiletto combo. So here's what we'll be using for the first itty bitty boxy. As you can see, I already cut out this piece. This is like a, almost like a suede-ish feeling faux leather. It's so nice. It's so sweet. So we're going to use that for the exterior. You can see I just used this exterior template here and I cut it out just like that with my rotary cutter. For the tab, I'm gonna use a one inch by two inch cut of cork, and what I'll be doing is just folding that in half like that and top stitching the sides. And then I have my zipper, which measures seven inches long as a number five zipper. I have my two cuts of lining. Again, I used this template right here to cut out my lining pieces. I have my bag tag, which I will be putting on using this grommet hole right here. I have a little keychain, which I think I'm gonna to try to sew in with the bag, but you can always add it after. Then I have this cute little coil wristband here, which I like to attach to the bag, and it's a fun way to hold your little itty bitty boxy bag on your wrist. Since I'll be doing a grommet on this bag, I have my 12 millimeter grommets die set here, which is a top and bottom die. And then over here, I have a whole set of hole punches here, but I am gonna use the hole punch for the 12 millimeter hole punch die, and then I have the bottom die as well, and then my rivet press. So I'm gonna show you how to use all of this. Okay, so let's get started with the first bag. I'm gonna grab my template and I'm just gonna lay it over my exterior piece here, just like this. And then I'm gonna grab a marking tool and I'm gonna mark a dot right in the center of this circle. And that's gonna be for placement of my bag tag. Now, I'm gonna flip my exterior piece around because I am gonna be doing a grommet. I wanna go ahead and mark placement for the grommet now so I don't have to finagle with it later after I've already built the bag. The grommet isn't installed until the very end when the bag is complete. So I wanna make sure my placement is exactly where I want it now. So I'm just gonna mark a circle right in that hole. There we go. So I have my bag tag placement and I have my grommet placement. So now to prep, I'm gonna grab my bag tag and a little bit of double-sided tape. I'll add some double-sided tape to the back of my tag. And then I'm just gonna center this on my dot that I marked. There we go. And if I just wanna check that it's gonna be good, I can actually take my template and rotate it so that I have the rectangle here that does not have the grommet hole and lay this over. And I don't know if you can see, but here are my dashed lines for that rectangle. And you can see my bag tag is nice and centered in there. So now I know this is gonna end up exactly where I want it. So now I'm gonna go to the machine and I'm gonna top stitch along all four edges of my bag tag at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So once you have your tag stitched on, we're going to take our zipper and we're gonna lay our zipper right side down on the top edge of your panel. So whichever side you want to be the front, think about that now. I'm gonna have my tag be the front so that when I lay down my zipper, when the zipper closes, it's gonna to go towards the left. So I'm gonna lay my zipper down and you see the zipper is longer than the panel. It's supposed to be like that. I want the end on the right to overhang more than the end on the left. I'll have a little bit of overhang on both sides, but I want it more on the right because then I can move my zipper out of the way while I'm working on this. So grab your clips and just line up the top edge of your panel with the edge of your zipper. So now I'm just gonna go baste the zipper in place at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. 
Once you have that basted, grab one of your lining panels and lay that right side down. And you can see from my lining, I'm just using water resistant canvas today. You can use quilt cotton if you'd like. You could use no lining if you'd like. So I'm just going to line this up with the top edge of the exterior, making sure looking from the top like this, I can see where the ends are. And I'm gonna line up those top corners first, clip those together, and then I can work on the middle. Okay, so now I'm gonna sew along this top clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. On the templates, that is what we're marking is a 3 8 inch seam allowance. If you'd like to use a quarter inch, you can. It won't adjust the sizes too much, but I am using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Once you have that sewn on, press the lining and the exterior wrong sides together. I like to just use my fingers to do this, but if you're using material that works with an iron, you can also press it with an iron to get a really clean fold right here. Once you have them pressed together, top stitch right along the seam by the zipper at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now take the bottom edge of your exterior panel and fold it up to meet the opposite edge of your zipper and make sure you're lining up the sides so it's not twisted. And then use some clips here to clip this in place. Again, I like to line up the top corners first. So I'm matching up the side over here on the right and then the top edge by the zipper, clipping there. And then I'll clip in the middle. I just don't want my zipper and my exterior panel to get twisted. All right, now I'm gonna baste along this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. This is where you have to be a little bit careful because it gets easy to lose your zipper. That's why I like to have that little end over here on the other side. So I'm gonna open up my zipper more. If these separate, that's fine. We're gonna have to do that later anyways. And just to hold it in place, I'll put a clip on the very end. You could also stitch over the end of the zipper here so that it doesn't fly off, but I find a clip works just as well just to hold that in place. So now looking at this with the zipper wrong side up and I have my lining panel that I already sewed on laying down here right side up, I'm gonna grab my remaining lining panel and lay it right side down onto the top edge of that zipper. Do your best to line it up once again by rotating this up and looking from the top and just clipping the corners together so it lines up with the exterior panel. And now I'm gonna sew along this clipped edge at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Now, if you haven't already, you'll wanna separate the zipper on the open end. Again, do your best to keep the zipper attached on the other side. And now we're gonna fold the lining and the exterior back, wrong sides together. If you wanna use an iron here, you can do that. I like to just pull them back and then clip the sides to get them taut, just like this. And once I have the sides clipped, then I can focus on pressing down along the zipper. And now what we wanna do by opening this up is we're gonna to top stitch right along this top edge here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And you're just gonna to have to kind of rotate this out of the way as you go. This is again where a longer zipper is helpful. Alrighty, so now what we wanna do is take our two lining panels and pull them right sides together and line them up along their bottom raw edges. And then use our clips to clip them together. And let's see, I'm going to leave, I'm gonna leave a two inch hole in the center on the bottom of these lining panels, because that's how we're gonna return this out in the end. So I'm just gonna leave a two inch opening down here. And now we're gonna go to the sewing machine and we're gonna sew along this bottom edge of our lining panels at a quarter inch seam allowance, starting at the end over here, backstitch at the end, sew to your first mark and make sure you backstitch and then pull up the needle, skip over this opening, this two inch opening, and then continue at a quarter inch seam allowance along the other side and make sure you backstitch at the mark and at the end. So now you should have something like this. The exterior is wrong side out, rolled over, lining, wrong side out, just like this. So now, to make it a little bit easier, let's pinch the sides over here where the zippers come to meet and just fold down to the bottom of your exterior. We're trying to find the midpoint on the bottom here. So I'm just gonna fold it down like that and then I'm gonna take my scissors and make the teeniest, tiniest little clip right on that corner and it creates a little triangle. So I'm gonna do that for the other side as well. Just make sure you're lining everything up properly so you actually get the midpoint on the bottom. And now, moving my zipper halfway into the middle, I'm gonna pull my exterior right sides together with the zipper teeth, and I'm gonna line up that midpoint mark right along the center of my zipper teeth. I know we haven't done the tab yet, we're gonna do that in just a moment. And I'm gonna grab some clips and hold that in place. Flipping around to the back where the lining is, I'm gonna do the same thing, except I'm gonna use the seam on the bottom as my midpoint mark. You can press open that seam if you'd like. I find it makes it easier. So I'm gonna press open the seam and pull that seam so that it lines up right with the center of my zipper teeth. Looking at the back, you have like a clear center line. And then I'm gonna add it to the clips I already have and then just pinch down along the sides. 
All right, so I did that side. I'm gonna repeat with the other side. The other side might be a little bit trickier because that zipper is open. Just do your best to use your fingers and close it. This is one of those things where bits of this might be, seem a little messy, but then once you get the other pieces together, it's not so bad. So then same thing with the lining. I'm gonna press open that seam on the back and pull it centered to meet my zipper and add it to the clips I already have. And then just add clips all the way along the edge. So we are clipping the exterior and the lining together. All of it's clipped together. There we go. So now let's deal with the tab real quick. I'm gonna fold this tab in half, wrong sides together, long sides together. You can use some double-sided tape here if you'd like, if it makes it a little bit easier. And since I'm using cork, cork can be left with a raw edge on the side. I don't have to worry about it. And I'm just gonna top stitch along both edges of this at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So at this point, you can attach a D-ring to this if you'd like, or a swivel hook, any type of hardware you'd like to make this an easier item to use. I'm gonna be using a keychain. Now the keychain I could attach afterwards because I can just open it up and thread it onto the tab, no problem. Uh, it's a little bit trickier to attach it while it's in here, but that's what I'm gonna show you how to do because if you were using a swivel hook or a D-ring, you would have to attach it now. So I'm gonna take my tab and just wrap it around my keychain just like that. Add a little clip to hold it together. If you want, you can baste along this raw edge just to hold it together, but I'm okay with it like this. And now I wanna add it to the end that has the zipper went open. So you can see on this one here, I actually attached two of them. I attached one on either end. That's an option as well. If you're only gonna attach one, I do suggest you attach it to the end where the zipper is open when you opened it. So see like this, this is the opening end. So that way, if it's hanging, it's like this. It's not upside down, right? If it hangs upside down and then you open it, the stuff is gonna fall out. So if you hold it like this and it's hanging from your wrist and you open this up, it's less likely that things are gonna fall out of it. So I'm looking for my open end right here. I'm going to carefully move some clips around so that I can open it up and I'm going to insert this into the exterior material side. So this is between the exterior panel and that zipper. I'm just gonna shove my key ring down in there and then I'm going to have the raw edge of my tab meet up with the raw edge of the zipper and the exterior panel. And if it makes it easier, you can even have your tab stick out a little bit further than necessary. Just do your best to get it centered. Again, this is such a fun little small project that if it's not perfect, it's not gonna be noticeable. It's still gonna look great. But the goal here is just to get everything together. All right, there we go. So now I'm gonna take this to the sewing machine and I'm gonna sew along both edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. If you'd like to sew at a 3 8 inch, you can. Uh, but I'll be doing a quarter inch seam allowance along both short edges that are clipped here. Make sure you backstitch really well at the beginning and the end. All right, once that's sewn in place, if you have any zipper overhang like I do, you can trim it down. I leave the tab longer, just like that. So now we're gonna flip this right side out through the lining panel. It is a very small hole, but it is also a very small bag, so you should be okay. You need to reach in and open your zipper all the way and just carefully and slowly flip this so that it's right side out. So when you flip it right side out, you have something like this, which is pretty flat. Now what we wanna do is flip it so it's aligning right side out. So push this out so the lining is right side out and really spend time working on these corners here. You wanna get these corners poked out perfectly. If you need to, grab a turning tool and gently get in there because if there's any creases or anything and they're not perfectly smooth, it's gonna show in the end. So I'm just gonna take my time to really get these corners poked out. Remember the exterior and the lining are sewn together at those corners. And if you need to, you can go in through the hole in the lining still and poke out the corners like that. Whatever it takes, we just need them poked out. So once those corners are poked, grab your tab piece that has the triangle. And so you can see we have a little triangle here and then you have a dashed line that goes right down the middle of that triangle. You're gonna grab your bag and you're gonna hold it so that the seam is facing up towards you, and you're gonna push down on these corners to create a little triangle, and we want that seam to be going right along the center, and this is where you can double check. You're gonna grab your template here, and you're gonna line up the top edges of your triangle with those dashed lines, and just make sure that the seam runs along that center dashed line. If it does, then you're good. Then everything is lined up as exactly as it should be. Now grab some sort of fabric marking tool, and you're gonna trace the bottom edge of that template, just like that. Now, grab a clip, 
and put a clip on there to hold it in place. And that is gonna be your stitch line. And this is how you're gonna make sure it's the exact right side everywhere. Every time I do this, I'm just double checking that I don't have any weird folds or anything in my exterior. And then I flatten out that corner just like this so the seam is running along the center. And this is where, if the seam is kind of at a diagonal or running somewhere else, that will let you know this isn't going to be perfect. I mean, there's no such thing as perfect, but it's not gonna be the way you want it in the end. So that center line is just to help you make sure that it's straight. And grab a clip. So I'm gonna continue this with the other two corners. Alrighty, once I have all four corners marked, I'm gonna go to the sewing machine and I'm just gonna stitch right on top of these marked lines. And I'm gonna make sure I back stitch really well at the beginning and the end for all four corners. So once you have those corners all sewn, I like to grab a lighter and just boop, boop those little tails. So I know you probably have these little thread tails on the ends where you backstitched, um, just to clean it up. I mean, it makes it look nicer and it also keeps the bag protected so they don't unravel over time and over usage. I just boop them with a the lighter. So now you can flip this out and take a look if you'd like, uh, or if you're ready to just be done with it, we can pull the exterior away just a bit because we just wanna focus on this hole in the lining. It's a very, very small hole, but just tug at the tips like this and push down the raw edges so that it's all nice and clean and the raw edges are tucked inside. There we go. And now very carefully, we're gonna just top stitch right along this edge. Honestly, when I first was making these, I closed all of these holes by hand, by hand stitching them. Um, it, you can do it at the machine as well. It's just a little, little tricky, but we're just gonna top stitch along this edge at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, we now have the opening and the lining closed. So let's just flip this right side out. And you can see we don't trim down these triangles or anything. By keeping them as these little tiny triangles, it actually helps reinforce those corners and gives it really good shape. So I'm just pushing out all the corners and then I'll just flatten this out. Let's close that zipper. How cute is this? So my bag tag is exactly where I want it. This feels really nice too. So you see, I still have my hole here for my grommet. So let's go ahead and install the grommet now. So first thing I'm gonna do is punch the hole. So I have my bottom die for the hole punch and then I have a 12 millimeter hole punch die. This is what it looks like. It has like a little spiral on the end of it. And I'm gonna screw that into the top of my rivet press. And now you wanna make sure you keep the lining and the exterior together because we're gonna punch through both of them. And we're just going to put this over the bottom die and we're gonna center that top die on our circle and punch out the hole. So you see, you can hear a little click and then you push this out and there we go. Now we have this perfect hole here. So let's switch out our dies now. And now since I'm gonna be using 12 millimeter grommets, I have a 12 millimeter grommet die set, which is a top and bottom die. The bottom die just plops right in the bottom. The top die is going to screw in. And then I have my grommets here and one is like a little disc and one has like a cylinder on it. The cylinder one is the one that goes on the outside, so I'm gonna stick the cylinder part through the hole, flip it over, and attach the disc to the back. It's not gonna snap in place or anything. You do have to hold it together. And now we put it so that the cylinder side is down and the disc side is up, so lining side up for me, onto our die set, and just get it, get it situated before you push it down. And I find that with the, with the rivet press, it just makes it so sturdy. You don't have to worry about it coming out. There we go. Super easy, super cute. Let's attach this to our little bracelet. And there you go, you put this on here. You're ready to go anywhere. Walk that doggy, or the cat, or the bird, whoever you wanna walk. There you go. How cute is that? All right, so now let's talk about the version that has two pieces as the exterior. So you can see this is one I've already made. When you have a directional print and you don't want it to be upside down, you can easily make a new exterior panel. So for this version, I have this print here. Now this print is really large considering the size of the boxy bag, but we're gonna try it out and see how we can get it to work. So I have this here. I already have my lining pieces cut using my lining template. For this one, I'm using a water resistant canvas for the lining and the tab. And so my tab is two inches by two inches and I will be double folding that. I once again have a seven inch zipper. I'm gonna be using a keychain again and also a little bracelet and my bag tag. So for this one, I'm pretty much just gonna show you how to use the template to cut out the material and then how to stitch together the exterior piece. But after that, you will continue on like we did with the first bag. So if you need to go find the timestamp for the first bag, and you will build it the exact same way. So I just wanna show you as well. Here is my template for the lining, which I sprayed that non-slip grip stuff on. It's on the back of it. And here's my template for the exterior where I did not spray it. My exterior template moves around everywhere. My lining template 
You see that? I'm putting the same pressure on it. It's not gonna move. So again, it's very, very helpful, especially if you're fussy cutting, which is what we're doing right now where we have images we want to be in very specific spots. Uh, if you're fussy cutting, then it's something you don't want this moving around on you. So this is where you can have some fun too. So remember, this is the hole for the grommet. So if you have like a poop bag thing, and let's say, you know, I want it to be on this guy's face, you know, I mean, obviously this is gonna overhang, but I can make this so that whenever the poop bag comes out, it comes out of his face. <laughs> Something funny like that. There's a lot of fun you can have with this. So let's see, how do I want this to be? I'm not gonna be using a grommet on this bag. So who do I want where? I have some small images here that could be cool. I think I'm gonna have the Death Star be the center of one of my bags. So I'm using these dashed lines to see where the center is. I'm using that hole as well. I'm just gonna center it right over that Death Star there. And then I'm gonna grab my rotary cutter and I will just cut out this rectangle. The thing about fussy cutting that a lot of people don't like is that it can be a little bit wasteful with material because like you see, I'm just cutting right in the center of my fabric instead of up here somewhere. I hold on to all my scraps and I use them for other projects. So I'm okay fussy cutting every now and then. Okay, so there's one. Now what do I want on the other side? I think I want this stormtrooper guy over here to be on the other side. I'm feeling the dark side today, guys. I am. All right, so once again, I'm just using the dashed lines to show me where it's gonna end up. And I'm hoping that my images end up on the sides. So not the top and not the bottom, but on the sides. I totally forgot I'm gonna cover up one of these things with my bag tag. Maybe I won't use my tag today. Yeah, so if I just take this, I can lay this over my fussy cut piece here and I can take my bag tag and lay it over that and I can see my bag tag is gonna cover up the design completely. So I think I'm not gonna use the bag tag today. I'll probably put it in a sew-in Oakleroos bag tag instead. But here we go. So I have my two pieces of material. Both of them are right side up. So now we're gonna rotate them so that they're bottom sides together. So see the bottom of one, the bottom of the other, bottom sides together, and then flip them together, lining up those bottom edges. Make sure you remember which one is the bottom edge and use some clips to clip together. There we go. So now we're gonna sew along this bottom clipped edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Once you have them sewn together, we're going to press them open. And so you wanna press the seam open. So this material I'm using is a water resistant canvas. It's waterproof canvas pretty much, but it's not so thick. It's more lightweight. So I can just press it with my fingers just fine. I could also press it with an iron from the right side and it would stay very flat, but I'm okay. I'm okay struggling with it just a little bit. So now what I'm gonna do is top stitch along both sides of this seam here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And there you go. Now you have an exterior panel. I'll grab this. You have an exterior panel just like you would if you just used one piece of fabric and you continue building the bag just like we did previously. I will continue building this bag off screen. Let's move on to the clear bag now. All right, so here's the material for my clear bag. I have some clear vinyl, no lining, just clear vinyl. I have again a seven inch long zipper. This is a little keychain that I'll be attaching. For this, I have just a half inch by two inch piece of vinyl. That's all, my bag tag. And then, because I don't like sewing this onto zippers and then folding it back and top stitching it like we do normally with other material, it just is so difficult for my machine to handle. I sew this on to the zipper right side up but then I like to cover up those stitches. So I cover them up with a little piece of binding. So these pieces of binding are five and a half inches wide by half of an inch tall. So five and a half by half of an inch. And they're just gonna cover up the raw edges really nicely. All right, so let's go ahead and build this. So first things first is I wanna add my bag tag and I'm going to take my main panel here, laying it right side up and I'm gonna grab my vinyl marker and I'm just gonna make a dot Hey guys, Future Jess here. I just wanted to give you guys a little tip. Because of the seam allowance different with the clear bag, you do need to change the midpoint mark for your tag just slightly. I would lift it up, northward, lift it up about an eighth of an inch. Just mid that midpoint mark. Just move that midpoint mark up about an eighth of an inch and then put your bag tag down and you should be good. But just because we, we sew on the zipper a little different, the placement of that tag is going to be off by a bit if you use the midpoint mark on the template. Right in the center of that hole. You could definitely still do a grommet with a clear bag. Um, I'm not going to this time, but you can. You can still make a grommet just like we did with the first bag. Then I'm gonna grab my bag tag and some double-sided tape and just add a little piece of tape to the back of it. And then I'm gonna center this over that dot. 
And then I always like to just give it a double check real quick with my template and make sure it's lined up between my lines. There we go. So now I'm gonna go top stitch this on at a eighth of an inch seam allowance. Alrighty, now that we have that in place, let's attach the zipper. So take your zipper and lay it right side up. And when it's closing, it goes towards the left. Grab some double-sided tape and add some double-sided tape right along the bottom edge of your zipper tape. I mean, right along that edge. And then remove the paper from your tape. And now take your clear vinyl and you're gonna line it up so the top edge of your clear vinyl lines up with the top edge of that tape. So it's not too close to the zipper teeth. And I'm gonna make mine so it's more towards the left. Once again, I like to have some overhang over here. I will tell you with the clear vinyl version, I do end up having to take the zipper completely off and then put it back on later. We'll talk about that when we get there. If you were able to get the zipper on in the first place, you can do it again, I promise. All right, there we go. So I just put that right on the tape. And now I'm gonna to go to the sewing machine and I'm just going to baste right along this top edge here at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Here we go. Now grab one of your little binding pieces and flip it over so you're looking at the wrong side and attach some double-sided tape to the back of your final binding. Now, let's grab our unit here, remove the paper from your tape, and we're going to take this and center it over the top edge. So what we wanna do is cover these stitches in the top edge of that clear vinyl, but we don't wanna get right on top of the zipper teeth. So we're gonna have this edge of our binding get close to the zipper teeth, but not so close that we can't use the zipper anymore. There we go. Move things around if you need to. So it's covering the top edge of my clear vinyl. It's covering the stitches. It's close to the teeth, but not too close. So now I'm gonna top stitch along the bottom and the top edges, the long edges of my binding at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so now is where you're gonna have to separate your zipper. Cause if you were to pull this, you need to pull it around like this and attach it. And there's really no way for us to sew it. I mean, you could try to sew it like this, but I think it's more trouble than it's worth. So I know it's scary. But you got it, take that zipper off. Whew, it's freeing, isn't it? So now take your zipper teeth that doesn't have anything attached to it and lay it right side up. And then just grab some double-sided tape here. And it doesn't matter where this lines up in relation to the other one. We're gonna be able to get the zipper back together, don't worry. So once again, I'm just going to take my tape and line it up on the very, very bottom edge of my zipper tape. And honestly, it doesn't really matter which side has zipper overhanging because we took the zipper off. So just line this up so the top edge of our clear vinyl lines up with the top edge of the double-sided tape. And now let's baste this down at an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now grab your remaining piece of binding and lay it wrong side up and grab your double-sided tape and just tape along the back of your binding. And then let's remove the paper from the back of it. And now let's center this over the top edge of our vinyl, making sure we are covering the top edge of the vinyl we're close to the zipper teeth, but not too close. There we go. So now let's top stitch along the bottom and top edges of the long sides of our binding. All right, so once we have this all prepped, what I'm gonna do is just trim down any excess zipper tape. I find it makes it a little bit easier to put the zipper on. There we go. And now this tag here is my right side, it's my front. So I want the zipper to close to the left when the tag is in the front. So I'm gonna attach the zipper over here on the right. So what I like to do is line up my zipper teeth so that I'm lining up the edges and I can kind of see which coil, the left coil or the right coil, which one of those coils needs to go on top to get it the way I want. For me, it's the right coil. So I insert the right side of the tape first and then I insert the left side. And honestly, I just look from above and I make sure that that right side coil is on top and then I push the zipper down. Just give it a press with my fingers. There's lots of little tools and jigs and things. I just find this is easiest for me. There we go. So now, carefully this is a hard part the, the the clear vinyl part is just harder we want to flip this so that it's vinyl wrong side out so we need to flip it around which if it's easier grab a hair dryer and blast this with some heat and that's gonna make it a lot easier to flip it i'm just gonna push through it and hope i don't damage anything okie dokie so now i'm gonna fold this in half because i want to find the midpoint on the bottom here so i'm lining up my zipper up top and then just gonna pinch. I'm gonna cut a teeny tiny triangle, just like I did previously. I'm gonna do the same thing over here on the open edge. Just fold it in half. So now I'm just gonna line up the raw edge of my zipper tape with that clipped center piece. So my dip zipper teeth are lined up with the midpoint mark on the bottom. Grab some little clover clips and clip this together. There we go. All the way to the edge. We don't have to worry about any lining or anything like that because we're not using it. There we go. 
On the other side, I have my zipper open, so I have to manually kind of push them together to line up with that bottom midpoint mark, and then clip the center, and then clip along the edges. All right, and then finally, I have my little tab, and I have my star key ring here, and you can add tabs to both sides if you'd like. I'm just gonna add it to the side of the zipper over here that's open, so pull it open, shove it in there, make sure the tab, I like the tab to stick out just a little bit, that way I don't lose it, honestly, because I feel like it's pretty easy to kind of let it drop down in there and then forget about it. So now I'm gonna sew along both of these edges at a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. If you're having problems sewing clear vinyl, you wanna use some regular scotch tape. Put it on the metal part of the sewing machine bed. You can also put it on the bottom of your presser foot. That's gonna make it a lot easier. Also, if you wanna switch over to a non-stick needle, that also makes it a lot easier. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit before I move on. First, that zipper tape is fraying something wicked, so I'm going to just melt that down. And then I'm also gonna melt down the threads that are poking out. Sometimes they catch on fire, it's okay. Um, every, everything on the inside of this bag is seen because there's no lining. So I like to make sure it's as cleaned up as possible. So now we're going to box the corners just like we did previously. So we're going to poke this out. It's already, you know, wrong side out. So we're gonna poke this out. This time, however, we have the seam that's in the way. So you see how we have a seam that's folded over to the right right here. Again, just look at the stitches and grab your template. And once again, make sure that these angles on your corner here are lined up with the left and right sides, the little dash marks. And then the stitches are running along the center line. And then grab your marking tool and mark right along that bottom line. Just tracing the bottom of your template and then use a clip to hold that in place while you trace that line on the other corners. When you go to the opposite side of this seam, make sure the seam is running along the same direction. So don't twist this to the right. It's gonna be a mess. So for me, it's the seam is pushed to the left all the way right here. And honestly, on both sides, I like the seam to be pushed away from the zipper tape. So here's the zipper tape over here on the right. I'm pushing the seam to the left. All right, so now let's take this to the sewing machine and just sew right over those marked lines and make sure you backstitch at the beginning and the end. Again, if you're having trouble with the vinyl, think about the tips. Make sure you increase your tension on your machine. Clear vinyl can be tricky depending on what you're using. All right, and just like we did before, let's melt any of those little threads on the corners. So you wanna keep it clean. You want it to look nice on the inside and the outside. So now gently turn this right side out. Again, if, it's, if you're struggling with it, get a hairdryer, heat it up. It's gonna make it a lot easier. All right, there we go. Our little clear pouch is all done and adorable. I actually, I forgot to mention this. You do need to raise up this tag a little bit whenever I was originally marking the midpoint for this. I'll put a future just in for when we put this tag in place, but this does need to be about an eighth of an inch higher than what we marked just because we did change the seam allowance on the top over here. So we can open this up. It's looking so cute. I just love these so much. I hope you guys love making these too. Alrighty guys, what do you think? So here's bag number one that we made with the cute little grommet and the tag. And I love this like faux leather. I don't even know what it is. I'll have a link down below. I know it's from Wonderground Fabrics, but it is so nice. And then we did the two panel one, if you have a directional print, which I did complete off camera, came together really cute. And like I said, I didn't want to put a tag on this because I didn't want to block, you know, the pieces that I was trying to highlight. So I did a little sewing tag right here. And that's a little Oakleroot sewing tag. So you, that's another option. If you don't want to put a big tag on the side, you can do little sewing tags. How cute is that? And finally, we did the clear one. And like I said, with my little future Jess, you do want to scoot this up. I mean, it still looks great, but if I scooted it up by just an eighth of an inch, it would be perfect. It would be exactly where I need it to be. So lots of options, guys. So many options. And as you can tell, I love making these. If you saw my first video, you know I've made a few hundred of these. I actually started making these years and years ago before I ever was on YouTube or anything like that. I was going on a Disney cruise and I was part of like fish extender groups. And I just decided that I wanted to make a bag for everybody. So I made hundreds of them to bring on the cruise ship and just handed them out. And they were so fun. Um, so these are, these are great. These are great for kids. These are great for teachers. These are great for holidays. They're great for travel. I particularly love them for cruises because on cruises, a lot of times we don't carry around a lot of stuff. We just carry around like our room card, you know, and maybe some chapstick or something. So 
These are just perfect for that. So I hope you love making these as much as I do. If you do and you post them on social media, please make sure you tag me. I love seeing your version. I hope you were able to get a set of the templates if you wanted them. If this is your first time hearing about these templates, check Shop Oakley Roots. We have lots of different templates for different bag patterns that you've seen on the videos. This is the brand new one, the newest, latest, and greatest. Uh, we have been restocking them a lot. They do sell out pretty quickly, but we're trying to restock them as much as possible. So just keep an eye out. Make sure you join that email list and we'll let you know as soon as they are restocked. I hope that you're having a great day. Have a fantastic rest of your week. Get out there and make something. Bye guys.